Next up, Jocelyn will give us a spectacular analysis of Panic at the Disco's musical career. Thank you so much. In this one, we're actually going to be talking about their rise and going directly into their eventual downfall this coming year. As of January 24th, this two weeks ago, about now, would frontman Pan Panic. Brendan Urie would have announced that the band has broken up, finally, which is surprising yet unsurprising for most, considering that he is the only surviving member left of this once explosively popular band. But how did we get here? That lies in what most believe is songwriter Ryan Ross and lead guitarist John Walker in 2009, a very, very long time ago. Now, they originally started doing this really weird, freaky circus sort of themes with their first album, their debut, A Fever You Can't Sweat Out, in 2009, which ended up being one of their most, if not their most popular and commercially, I guess, their best album. It's their best album. There's really no lie about it. From there, the two previously mentioned would end up leaving because of infighting because of uh, artistic differences. Ryan and Walker had been writing apart from Yuri and then drummer Spencer and decided that the band should be taken in two separate ways. Now that these two leaving would cause a pretty big shift in their musical career, then moving into a new era of their Vices and Virtues and then Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die album, which were nowhere near as successful as Fever was. However, they still did pretty well for what they did. They toured with Fall Out Boy and were really starting to make a name for themselves as Brendan was starting to get more popular. Now in 2015 is when things would start getting really bad, when Spencer would eventually leave the group because of drug-related issues, thus leaving Yuri as the only remaining member of the original four. From there, he would end up spending a three-year period trying to recruit new members to fill the spots in the band, and in the meantime, would be working on the Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die album, which commercially did not do well at all. But that really started to establish where the band was starting to go. After that, around 2018 is when things would start getting bad when things would really start taking a turn for the worst as their guitarist, Kenny Harris, would be accused of sexual misconduct and really start drawing negative attention to the band. <sighs> From there, things didn't get any worse. It didn't get any better, I'm sorry. There ended up being more controversy with Dallin Weeks and the, guards, or the band's security guard Zach, I forget his name. Um, and he ended up saying some really not great things, some really disgusting things that would never really be addressed by Brendan or any of the other group and would be swept under the rug. Moving into 2019, 2020, when their next album or their next record would come out, that's when Brendan started catching heat of his own. He started getting all of these different allegations by these different fans coming forward saying that he had groped them at their concerts, which ended up being false, and they were all allegations, but it didn't help the fact that his reputation was already tarnished. Finally, in 2023, 2023, 2022, when their final record would come out, most people would call it lacking and musically uninspired, thus causing the end to this once explosively popular pop punk band. And that's really to wrap all of it up. Thank you. Back to the hosts. Definitely some hot takes. After these commercials, we'll be back with some more discussions and another game.